Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Side Projects. As always, I am your host Simon, and in the video today, we're looking at buildings that got blown up or demolished in other ways. Some of the biggest demolitions from history. Let's jump in. From ruined cities to devastated bridges, tales of demolitions, they're not rare in the history books, and while a huge chunk of these demolitions spun from acts of war, terrorism, and nature, there are a reasonable percentage of demolitions that occur in a completely controlled way. And I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I love watching those videos on YouTube of shit getting blown up. I mean, not by terrorists. Definitely not by terrorists but by, like, controlled demolition. Controlled demolitions can be done in a number of ways, from the use of bulldozers and wrecking balls to the application of explosives. Indeed, if you've ever witnessed a building imploded by engineers, you probably felt like you were being involuntarily featured in a Hollywood movie. Here in the video today, we're covering some of the most monumental controlled demolitions of all time, featuring skyscrapers, stadiums, dams, and even some bridges. The Singer Building was once the world's tallest building from 1908 to 1909. Today it holds a record for being the tallest building ever to be demolished in the history of controlled demolitions. Also known as the Singer Tower, it served as the headquarters of the sewing machine manufacturing company Singer Corporation and was one of the early skyscrapers of Manhattan. The building consisted of a 14-story base and a 41-story tower, ultimately soaring to 187 meters. Despite being seen as an iconic structure for its unique shape, the Singer Building's downfall became imminent in 1960 when the Singer Company announced its plans to sell off the building and move to Rockefeller Center. According to evidence from the book New York City Architecture, the building was sold to Lack of Own Rose, who immediately resold it to Financial Place Incorporated. It was then acquired by William Zeckendorf, a real estate developer, who hoped to get the New York Stock Exchange to move into the building. However, that didn't work out. You probably know that. However, in 1964, the United States Steel Corporation acquired the building, and they had just one goal in mind, to demolish it. Apparently, the Singer Building was considered obsolete and unfit for the booming growth of modern business, owing to its relatively small interior space. The demolition of the building began in 1967, and by 1969, the last piece of scrap had been carted away. In the words of Sam Roberts, a New York Times journalist, the Singer Tower fell victim to a malady called progress. That's a really nice quote. The building will soon be overtaken by 270 Park Avenue as the tallest building ever demolished. The demolition of 270 Park Avenue began in 2009, and the 216-meter giants will be making way for an even taller building set to house J.P. Morgan Chase. The Deutsche Bank Building was a 39-story skyscraper also located in New York City. Towering at 157.6 meters, the Deutsche Bank Building was part of the skyline of downtown Manhattan. It was located adjacent to the World Trade Center, which would fall to the terrorist attacks of September the 11th. During the 9-11 attacks, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed, and in the process, it tore a massive gash in the facade of Deutsche Bank. Owing to the structural damage suffered by the building, the executive board of Deutsche Bank insisted that it it would be taken down despite being advised by its insurers to treat it as repairable damage. And I am so ready for the conspiracy theorists to start sounding off in the comments. Go ahead. Furthermore, the discovery of human remains and large amounts of toxic substances in parts of the building would seemingly seal its fate. The demolition of the building was a rather lengthy process, marred by several unforeseen circumstances. In May 2007, while work was in progress, a 7-meter-long pipe fell from the 34th floor and crashed onto the roof of a nearby building. Two firefighters sustained injuries from the falling debris. In August, a severe fire happened on the 17th floor due to some workers smoking in violation of safety rules. The fire incident would kill two firefighters and injure 15 others. Ultimately, the building's demolition was completed in February 2011. This site is currently occupied by the Vehicular Security Center and Liberty Park. The JL Hudson Building was a department store in Detroit, Michigan. Consisting of 29 floors with a total height of 134 meters, it was the tallest building to have ever been imploded. Completed in 1911, the store took up an area of over 200,000 square meters, and immediately it was the tallest department store in the world. However, the aftermath of World War II affected many Detroit businesses, including JL Hudson. Ultimately, in 1983, when downtown Detroit was at the lowest point of its economic decline, the store decided to shut down. At exactly 
exactly 5.47 p.m. Eastern Time on October 24, 1998, the demolition of the JL Hudson Building began. The building was wired with explosives, and over 20,000 people watched as the countdown began. In a matter of seconds, the JL Hudson Building was reduced to an 18-meter pile of rubble. Windows of nearby buildings were also shattered during the implosion. The AFE term was a 38-story, 116-meter skyscraper situated in the West End district of Frankfurt, Germany. The building belonged to the Johann Wolfgang Goethe University and was used to house offices and seminar rooms. It took two years to be constructed, and by the time of completion in 1972, the AFE Tower became the tallest building in Frankfurt. This rank would, however, be quickly snatched from it in 1974 by City House, which was 142 meters tall. The AFE Tower was a rather controversial structure with three frequent technology failures occurring with the building. These errors would also result in an elevator accident in 2005, which killed a university employee. The building was eventually abandoned in 2013. In 2014, the university was given the green light to proceed with the demolition. On February 2, 2014, over 10,000 spectators cheered as the AFE Tower was reduced to rubble. Almost 1,000 kilograms of explosives were inserted into 1,500 holes. Barriers of up to 6 meters were erected around the building to prevent injury from flying debris. The success of this demolition made the AFE Tower the tallest structure to have ever been imploded in Europe. All dams have negative effects on the aquatic environment where they're located, but these adverse effects are usually cancelled out by the benefits of hydroelectric power and flood control. However, when the negative effects start to outweigh the benefits, a dam becomes eligible for demolition. No surprises. The largest dam removal ever done was the Elwha Ecosystem Restoration Project in Western Washington. The project's aim was to demolish the 33-meter Elwood Dam along with the 64-meter Gleans Canyon in a bid to restore the Pacific salmon habitat which had been heavily degraded by the presence of the hydroelectric plants. The demolition of the two dams began in September 2011 and ended in 2014. The demolition of Gleans Canyon involved the use of barge-mounted hydraulic hammers which removed the first 5 meters of the dam. The next 52 meters were chipped away by excavators, layer by layer. With only a few meters left of the once towering structure, some good old explosives were planted into the concrete walls. The series of blasts that followed would ultimately reduce the dam to fragments of concrete. The Elwa Dam was a different case, though. Its demolition was slower and more methodical. It simply involved creating temporary channels which slowly drained the dam until all that was left was concrete and fill materials. These were then excavated under dry conditions. The landmark tower was a 120-meter skyscraper in Fort Worth, Texas. It was home to the Continental National Bank of Fort Worth, and at the time of its completion, it stood as the tallest building in the city. After its groundbreaking in 1952, the building was halted when construction got to the fourth floor due to an economic crisis in 1953. Construction resumed in 1956, and it was completed the next year. A 12-meter tall revolving clock was planted at the roof of the building, and at that time, it was the largest revolving clock in the world. The clock also had the initials of Continental National Bank, and it was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest sign in the world. Unfortunately, on March 28, 2000, a tornado struck downtown Fort Worth, causing damage to the tower. The clock was consequently removed for safety reasons. Over the years, the building was purchased and resold several times, and ultimately in 2004, it was purchased under foreclosure by XTO Energy, who considered restoring the building. However, the company concluded that the best course of action would be demolition. Thus, on March 18, 2006, 165 kilograms of explosives were planted around the tower, and at exactly 7.40 a.m., the building was imploded. The King Dome was one of the most iconic buildings in Seattle. However, it had a rather short lifespan of just 24 years. Owned and operated by King County, Washington, the King Dome was a multi-purpose stadium that hosted countless events. Opened in 1976, the King Dome measured 200 meters wide and had a seating capacity of 59,000 for baseball, 66,000 for football, and 40,000 for basketball. One of the major problems the King Dome had, though, was a failing roof. Even before it was opened, leakages were already being discovered around the 
stadium and attempts to fix them up only made things worse. In 1994, waterlogged ceiling tiles weighing over 12 kilograms fell into the seating area just an hour before a scheduled game, resulting in the stadium being closed for repairs. These structural problems, coupled with some internal altercations between board members of the different clubs that used the stadium, all contributed to the stadium's closure and the ultimate decision to blow it up. The demolition of the Kingdome took place on March 26, 2000. This was approximately the 24th anniversary of the stadium's opening. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the Kingdom did, however, go down as the largest building by volume ever demolished through controlled implosion. It was the first large domed stadium to ever be demolished in the United States. K-25 was the codename for a World War II project which produced enriched uranium for nuclear weapons. One such nuclear weapon produced by this project was the Little Boy Bomb, which was used to bomb Hiroshima in 1945. Located in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, the four-story K-25 facility comprised over 489,000 square meters of floor area and enclosed a volume of about 2,760,000 cubic meters. In 1944, when it was built, the K-25 stood as the world's largest building. While the K-25 was successfully used to produce enriched uranium during the war, it would also become obsolete during the post-war period as more energy-efficient ways of producing uranium emerged. In response to an order from then US President Lyndon B. Johnson to cut the production of enriched uranium down by 25%, K-25 was closed in 1964. Eventually, 1997 would see the decommissioning of the K-25 facility by the US Department of Energy. The demolition of K-25 began in 2008, and by 2014, the last debris from the facility was carted away. The Zhuangyang Viaduct was a two-lane bridge in the Chinese city of Wuhan. Its length was over 3.5 kilometers, and it currently stands as the longest bridge ever demolished in China. Built in 1997, the bridge was an essential part of China's National Highway 318, running from Shanghai to Tibet. However, owing to China's fast-paced infrastructural development, the bridge was considered too old, even at just 16 years. Thus, it was marked for demolition to be replaced by a six-lane bridge spanning over three miles. But how do you blow up a 3.5-kilometer bridge in a residential area without a whole lot going wrong? Further, there were 100,000-volt power transmission cables, along with several gas pipes running underground, parallel to the road. To pull this off, the engineers adopted a rather primitive, yet effective technique. They swaddled the viaduct with cloth apron, tightly tied with wire, and then padded the covering with sandbags and large bladders of water. The result was a soft, improvised armor that slightly muffled the sound of the explosion, dampened the blast's energy, and prevented the billowing dust cloud that is common with controlled implosions. Interestingly, while this was the longest bridge ever demolished in China, it only took 12 seconds to reduce the whole thing to rubble. And so I really hope you enjoyed those largest demolitions. I enjoy these particularly. I don't know why there is something so satisfying about seeing, you know, years of work get destroyed like that. But here we are. Please do hit that like button if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe to this channel for more stuff uh, three times a week right now. So hopefully you'll do that and I'll see you next time.